<clears throat> technique number one is going to be raya or the fringe. So what you're going to do is give yourself some room if you've already started weaving to work around the base. Not that it needs to go at the base, it can go anywhere, but generally the fringe goes at the bottom. And you are going to decide how long it's gonna be. Remember, you can always cut them after. Here is an example of one piece of string. Here is three pieces of string doubled up makes six. To cut multiple pieces of the string, wrap it around, and then cut your loops. You'll take your three pieces, the white here shows the regular weave, which is where you just go over, under, over, under. I showed that in the loom making video. The brown string here already shows the lace effect. The lace effect must be done with a thick yarn or perhaps a ribbon if you have ribbon at your house or an old shoelace, but it has to be thicker than what I give you in most of the bags. So it's again the plain weave, so if this is over, I go under, but instead of scrunching it down a ton, you just scrunch it down a little so that way you still see the warp strings in between. Remember the warp strings go up and down. Now the goal of the lace is to create a contrast between the warp and the weft. So if I have white warp strings, I do not wanna use white for this because I want to be able to clearly see the warp strings through the weft. So once you get the whole row, I pull, 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 very gentle on the end, as I always used to say in elementary, pull it to a hug, so it just gently grabs. And then you're gonna scrunch down just a little bit it's gonna disappear a little bit here where this yarn gets thinner, but for the most part, you will be able to see the warp strings in between. And then I just keep going. And remember, you can cut your string as at whatever length you want. So maybe I'm gonna go in a series of three. So I'm gonna do three of that, three of this, three of the next thing, okay? But again, it's all about pattern and repetition that you are coming up with. The next technique is going to be a Persian or Egyptian knot. So to do this one, what you're going to do is you can wrap it around the first string twice, just so that way um, your tail kind of stays put on you. When you have all these tails at the end, we're gonna weave them in and poke them behind so you won't ever see them. So if that's right there for now, it's okay. So now I'm gonna grab the end and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of skip over two. So I'm gonna skip over this one and skip over this one and then I'm going to end up wrapping it around this one string. Just gonna loosen that. Okay, so I went around and now I'm gonna go around again, but this time I'm gonna come through, so the big circle gap I've created, I'm gonna come through that, so that way it ties it, okay? So as I come through the middle, it's going to create a little knot, okay? And again, this kind of works better when you have a thicker yarn. So now I'm gonna skip this one and go over this one, okay? And again, you wanna make sure that you are pulling the string up, don't come down yet. Okay, so I'm going over. So I'm going to go around again. This time I've bunched up all my yarn so it's easier. And then I'm going to shove it through the middle here. So that little pile, that little kind of gap, I'm gonna take this and push it through there so it creates a knot and then I just pull it down. So as you look, you'll end up seeing little knots, okay? It's like a wavy pattern. And then what I can do is once I'm situated, I can tie this one up a little bit so it matches. And you just wanna make sure that again, you go through, okay? So I go over two, wrap around, 
okay? And then you're gonna go over one more time. And then through to make a knot. And then I keep going all the way across, keep going back, keep going, however many times you want to. For the next technique, I'm going to show you pick and pick, which is where you need two colors at the same time. So pick and pick, you're going to start from each end and you're just going to begin with a regular weave. When you get your colors into the loom first, you want to make sure that they're going opposite. So my gray will always go over this string and the brown will always go under. So that way you will see the gray stripe coming up here, the brown stripe will come up here and you're gonna create vertical stripes. So my gray is on top, which means I need to go with the brown next. So the brown is gonna go under this string because I can see that it went under this string. So what I'm gonna do is loop it over the top of the gray so it kind of grabs it and then I'm gonna go under this string okay so you'll always go the same way with that color so now I'm gonna pull 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 and what you'll see is it's going to grab around the gray so it won't come through then I'm just gonna scrunch, and then I'm going to do the backwards row with the gray. For this technique to look the best, you wanna scrunch these strings down as much as possible so that you don't end up seeing the white warp strings in between. But you can see how the, the brown is only over here, the gray is only over here. As you continue to build, it looks better. So to do the twill, I encourage you to look at the slideshow and follow along the pattern. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to start with one row and skip under two, over two, under two, over two. Next, you're going to go in the same pattern under two over two, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna shift over a row so that way you follow a diagonal going up. So if this is under, over, I wanna go over this one, under this one, and then shift to over two, okay? And you're just gonna do the same thing, over two, under two. The tricky part about the twill is on the end. That's where the thought process occurs of you switching direction and counting out how many you need to change. And you can see that diagonal line start to occur. So when I do the next color, if I or same color, doesn't matter, if I want to shift in the opposite direction, then I just need to count out and start correcting so that way I'm done with this and then I'm gonna start going diagonal this way, okay? Let me do this last row. For the basket weave, it's going to be similar to the twill, but you're going to follow a set pattern rather than a shifting pattern. The easiest way to do the basket, because you're doing two in a row, is to double up your yarn. So take both ends, loop them together, and then find the middle point of the string and weave leading with that. You're gonna go over two, under two, over two, under two, and then you've got two rows, for the price of one and then go back in the opposite manner. Then you'll see the basket pattern start to happen if you do not scrunch your weft strings down a lot. To do the sumac, you're going to take your next color and begin by laying it under the first two strings. We'll tuck that tail away later. Then you're gonna go over 
four strings. One, two, three, four. Then you're going to loop back and make sure you're going in an above fashion. So it's in a diagonal going up. And then you just repeat that process. So over the two plus the two next to it, back around. And you'll see it starting to create lines. So under those two, so over, over the next two. Don't pull too hard. And if you do this after the basket weave, then you can see I've already got that natural split because it's holding them together, which makes this really easy. To do the pile weave, you'll need something like a pencil or a skewer or um, something round and kind of skinny to wrap the yarn around. So what you're gonna do is first you're going to weave your color in with a regular plain weave. Start from the end the, that doesn't have the tail. That way you're pulling the slack in. So if it's over a string, then what you're going to do is just pull that over, up over your pencil. So pull up and grab around. Pull it up, loop it around. Going over the strings, so then you kind of pull it up and then wrap it around. Be sure to keep even pressure throughout. Don't pull any too hard. Once you're all set with that, you can remove your item, squish them down, and then before you start the next row, you're going to do a plain weave. So on the last loop, if you pull too tight, it's going to get small. So what I'm gonna do is put my finger in there, and then I'm just gonna do a plain weave. And that will lock it in place. And then on the third row, so the one that I go back on, then I can do another pile weave, which is where I would wrap it around the pencil or stick or something. Um, but you need to make sure that you do a regular plain weave in between each row so that way it kind of um, secures them together. And as you're pulling, watch the end here because you need to make sure that you're not going to pull out any of your piles. So just to that gentle hug, push down, make sure they're good and looped, and then you would work on the next pile. The last method I have for you is interlocking. So take your colors. This works really well if you're doing mountains and splitting colors. So you're gonna take your colors and you're just gonna do a plain weave for wherever you want the color to be. So if I'm trying to do a triangle here, then I would plain weave all the way up and that's where a template would come in handy if you draw um, out underneath, then you would follow along your pattern and then when I'm ready to do the next color, I'm going to connect them where they meet. Now, to interlock the next one, what you want to do is kind of keep these a little bit spread apart because what you're going to end up doing is going in between each row. So depending on where your color is going to start, it can go three in the middle. So I'm going to start over here and you're just going to weave it in. And then when you're ready and you come to the last row, this is going to go over 
under this one and then wrap around. So I'm gonna just loop over this one, under this one, So now as I'm ready to interlock, this one's over. I'm gonna push this one down and then I'm gonna go over under and then it will be in between the orange pieces. For interlocking, you just wanna make sure that you're meeting on the strings that has the end of that color. So as my orange progresses over, my um, brown is gonna progress over. So you can see how they interlock here. 